right, so I'm Dr. Robert Lolo again, and I'm here with Dr. Sue, who is a uh, pediatrician, has had a long, great, successful career. And she's had the opportunity, and we've had the opportunity to have her work with us here at the Malolo Center and get to know more intimately what we do. Um, she's also um, been a mom uh, of a child that she's um, also worked with, and she can tell you that story. But I think she just wanted to kind of share her opinion on what she's been able to objectively look at and say and her training as a, a, a pediatrician and how this kind of, you know, what her perspective on this all is. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, I, I was, uh, I'm a pediatrician, um, board certified in both internal medicine and pediatrics. And I trained at, um, in internal medicine. Well, I went to medical school in the late eighties and did residency in medicine and pediatrics, um, in the nineties. And I've been working in emergency, in pediatric emergency medicine and adult emergency medicine, but the last 10 years or so, mostly pediatrics. I uh, come to know Dr. Malillo and uh, Dr. Mancinelli through uh, a, a child that I adopted in 2008, uh, who was a newborn at the time, and he turned out to have uh, developmental delays, diagnosed with ADHD, um, anxi anxiety, and learning disabilities. And I, as a pediatrician, I had almost no training in this kind of medicine. I w a friend of mine who also has a, t a developmentally delayed child <laughs> observed in my child when he was about a year old, Sue, your kid is, is floppy. And that was absolutely the first, with all my training in medicine, that I even thought that he was in any way different and this wasn't just the normal developmental trajectory. I my pediatrician at the time was a developmental pediatrician, and every visit we, we would sit, notice that he was not quite meeting his milestones, and every visit she would say, you just have to, we wait. We'll, if he hasn't met this by, been walking by 15 months, maybe we could have him evaluated for early intervention. That age came, that age went, and basically he ended up in a special ed program um, and is now still in a special ed school, but doing much, much better. So when I first met, met Dr. Melillo, he, he was uh, in a, he came to a, a parent lecture arranged, arranged by Dr. Mancinelli because, uh, for, for, our, for all the parents of the kids in his class. And at that time, I had absolutely never had any, knew any connection between um, primitive reflexes and subsequent development. And that was an eye-opener, but I still was very skeptical. And until I actually saw what goes on in, in this center and in the one in Rockville Center, it, it really it, it absolutely was not in my training, in my, in my world at all. But now I feel totally differently and I really want to be involved in this kind of medicine because it's, I really think that this is the way of the future, that um, the brain can change and, and does go through developmental phases that, um, and, it, and it works. It's, and, and seeing this child, Wesley, being able to communicate and people not, people like me in the emergency room, I would have, I would have treated him I would treat him as a, talk to him as a two-year-old. So this is absolutely eye-opening, mind-blowing, and amazing right. that this works, it, that it's helping kids so much. And I really wish, and I've said this to, to Lynn over and over, that we could get this kind of system out into the public because there is so much need for it. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think it's important because yeah. people don't know what, what, what training pediatricians have. First of all, Primitive reflexes, you were never trained in primitive, but you know that they I exist, that right? They you existed. knew they existed. Like they're a yeah. fact. They're not something yeah. that we made up or anything, but they're, they're, they're known in medicine, right. but you were never trained, and most pediatricians aren't trained to actually look for them. Right. We, we know that they exist and that it ended there. Right. And didn't and really... We didn't work on them. We didn't... 
We just were taught that this it's a stage that everybody goes through. Right. And I think that, you know, also paying attention to the milestones and whether they mean something or not and how important they may be, that's also something that, you know, it, again, that's not traditionally the approach. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. And so um, I think, again, even for us, if we could just help influence pediatricians to start looking at this and paying a little bit more attention because it's not invasive, it's safe, it's based on science and could years be of safer it. and it doesn't yeah. involve chemicals and altering the right. brain's chemistry that way. It, it actually changes the wiring. Right. And, and most pediatricians really are not aware or, or really can't say what they think is happening in the brain in, in most kids with different developmental issues, right? Totally correct. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's not putting down pediatricians. I mean, they're out there and obviously they're well-trained. They're great people. They're trying to help people. It's a different they perspective. Gravitate. It's just a different perspective, yeah. but it's important because it doesn't mean one's right and what's wrong. It just means there's another, another side to it and that pediatricians have their expertise and what they do and they do a good job and they're all well-meaning, but that doesn't mean that they know everything. Um, and this aspect of brain development and what can happen and how we can change it and how we can identify it early um, and some of the other things about how it affects the metabolism. And the it needs to be integrated into the, the pediatric toolbox. And we need exactly. To, it's complementary. It, they, we can work, the two systems can work together yeah. as one, really, because we're helping the same brain. Right. And I think that, as, you, as we've said, that most pediatricians, their, their orientation, if a child's not meeting milestones, is really just to try to keep the parent calm, right? Because and otherwise, yeah. you don't really know what to do to change it. And so, therefore, it's more about just trying to manage the parents. That's a, a huge part of it. Mm, yeah. And to wait because they always tell you that it will, it will happen in time. Right. But it may not. Which is what it, they told you. It's what they told us. Right. Yes, and so I know that other moms that we've spoken to that have been pediatricians and have also said, well, you know, I, they kind of treated me like an, you know, a, a mom that was just over anxious and, you know, really making things out of nothing and that, you know, there was nothing there and they made you feel like there wasn't really a problem, but they Still also, anxious parents. they didn't listen to you. Yeah, they don't. And they, yeah. maybe they listen, but they don't really know that this is right next door to the, you know, that right next door, there's another approach that can really be right. integrated with ours. Right. Okay. So hopefully we can take home message. Yeah. We can bring yeah. that out there yeah. someday soon. I hope so. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. it.